Hello and welcome to G-Fun Facts Online. Today we are stripping away the hype and getting straight into the engineering of a monumental shift in space exploration. We are talking about the moon, but not the romanticized silver orb we see in the sky. We are talking about the moon as a thermal environment, a brutal, unforgiving landscape that has historically destroyed almost every machine humanity has sent there once the sun goes down. Specifically, we are going to dissect the mission of Blue Ghost, the lander from Firefly Aerospace that, in March 2025, fundamentally changed the rules of the lunar game. If you follow space news, you know that landing on the moon is hard. In the early 2020s, we saw a string of commercial failures, tipped over landers, crashed vehicles, and communication blackouts. But landing is actually only half the battle. The real boss fight of lunar exploration is the lunar night. To understand why Blue Ghost is such a big deal, we have to look at the thermodynamics of the moon. The lunar day lasts 14 Earth days, and the lunar night lasts another 14. Because there is no atmosphere to redistribute heat, the temperature swing is violent. When the sun is up, it is boiling hot. But the moment the sun dips below the horizon, the surface temperature plunges to negative 280 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 173 degrees Celsius. This is the cryogenic dark. For decades, standard electronics simply could not survive this. Batteries drain instantly in that cold because the chemical reactions slow to a halt. Circuit boards and metal casings contract at different rates, physically snapping solder joints and cracking microchips. This is why almost every commercial lander prior to 2025 was designed as a day tripper. They would land at dawn, sprint to do as much science as possible for 10 or 12 days, and then effectively die the moment the sun set. They were disposable. But Blue Ghost was different. Developed by the Texas-based company Firefly Aerospace, this lander was named after a rare species of firefly, the Phausis reticulata, and it lived up to its name by glowing in the dark, metaphorically speaking. This mission began on January 15, 2025. It launched on a SpaceX Falcon 9, but it did not take a direct, fast shot to the moon. The Apollo missions used to get there in three days. Blue Ghost took a 45-day trajectory. This is a highly fuel-efficient spiral transfer. By taking the long way, the team could save propellant, which meant they could pack more payload, and, crucially, they could test every single subsystem in the deep cold of space before they even arrived. This was a shakedown cruise. On March 2, 2025, Blue Ghost arrived at its target, Mare Crisium, the Sea of Crises. This is a massive basin on the northeast quadrant of the moon's near side. It is a flat lava plain, but it is surrounded by treacherous ring mountains. The lander used a vision-based navigation system, essentially eyes that scanned the cratered surface in real time, identified hazards, and steered the vehicle to a soft touchdown near a volcanic feature called Mons Latre. And unlike its predecessors that had tipped over, Blue Ghost stuck the landing. Firefly CEO Jason Kim famously said, it was upright, stable and talking. For the next two weeks, the lander operated as a node for NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services, or CLPS. This initiative is all about using private companies to act as the scouts for the Artemis generation. Blue Ghost carried 10 payloads. It wasn't just taking pictures, it was doing heavy lifting. It drilled into the lunar regolith to measure heat flow coming from the moon's core. It tested a radiation-tolerant computer to see if standard processors could be hardened against solar flares. It even tested a lunar GPS system. This is fascinating because right now, we do not have a satellite navigation network around the moon. If astronauts get lost, they are lost. Blue Ghost tracked signals from Earth's GNSS satellites, proving that future rovers could navigate using Earth-based signals, even from nearly 400,000 kilometers away. But the most dramatic moment of the surface operations occurred on March 14, 2025. While people on Earth were watching a total lunar eclipse, Blue Ghost looked up and saw the inverse, a total solar eclipse. The Earth passed directly in front of the Sun. For the lander, this was a terrifying stress test. The sunlight vanished, and the temperature dropped rapidly, plunging the landing site into a premature mini-night. The solar panels went dark, the batteries took over, and Blue Ghost did not flinch. It pointed its cameras at the Earth and captured the diamond ring effect, where sunlight refracts through the Earth's atmosphere, creating a halo of fire. This was a dress rehearsal for the main event. On March 16th, the Sun began to set for real on Mare Crisium. This was the moment where every previous commercial lander would have signed off. The standard procedure is to power down to try and save the electronics, essentially hoping to hibernate. But, Firefly had a bolder plan. They wanted to see exactly how long their thermal engineering could hold out. As the shadows lengthened and the solar power input trickled to zero, Blue Ghost switched to its onboard battery reserves. It kept the computer running, it kept the heaters on, it kept the cameras rolling. For over five hours into the absolute darkness of the lunar night, Blue Ghost continued to operate. This was unprecedented. During this vigil, it captured images of something called the horizon glow. This is a ghostly phenomenon that scientists have theorized about since the Apollo days. The idea is that the solar wind charges the lunar dust, 
causing it to levitate electrostatically and hover above the horizon, catching the last scattered rays of sunlight. Blue Ghost provided the first ground-level evidence of this since 1972. It sent back 119 gigabytes of data in total, double what was required. Its final transmission was a text string that read, Good night friends. Now it is important to clarify that Blue Ghost did not wake up when the sun rose again in April. The batteries eventually drained, and the deep freeze likely destroyed the chemistry of the power cells. But that does not matter. The mission was not designed to survive indefinitely. It was designed to prove that we can bridge the gap. That five-hour extension proved that the thermal architecture is robust enough to eventually support missions that survive the full two weeks. And that brings us to the future. This success has greenlit Blue Ghost Mission 2, which is scheduled for 2026. This mission is going to the far side of the moon. The stakes are higher there because there is no direct line of sight to Earth. All communication has to be relayed through a satellite. Mission 2 will carry a radio telescope called Lucy AE Night. The reason we are going to the far side is radio silence. The bulk of the moon blocks all the radio noise from Earth, our TV broadcasts, our radar, our GPS. It is the quietest place in the inner solar system. This telescope will listen for the faint signals of the cosmic dark ages, the time before the first stars formed. Even more exciting, Mission 2 will carry a wireless power receiver from Volta Space Technologies. This is the holy grail of lunar survival. The idea is that in the future we will have orbiting satellites beaming power down to landers during the night, effectively eliminating the need for massive batteries or nuclear generators. Blue Ghost Mission 1 was the proof of concept. It demonstrated that a private company, not a superpowered government, could execute a complex precision landing and push the boundaries of survival in one of the harshest environments known to physics. It moved us from the era of visiting the moon to the era of inhabiting the moon. Thank you for listening to G Fun Facts Online. If you enjoyed this deep dive into lunar engineering, stay tuned for our next episode.